Hey knitters, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I'm your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry, Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon, linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, makers, and designers that I talk about in today's episode, just like every single time. Um, first, I want to say thank you guys for all your support while I prepare to go to Korea. Um, I probably won't upload a video while I'm there because I'm not sure how um, the region locking will work. Um, yeah, so I won't upload while I'm there, but I will upload as soon as I'm back. And I really wanted to make sure to upload today because one, I promised you guys, and two, um, it's for me mainly, it's for me, because I would miss you guys. Um, there's not a lot to show you knitting wise. I do have a a funny story to share. It's knitting related, um, but the, uh, I'm in a lot of pain right now related to that story. But before I tell it, let me first talk about um, the title of this episode. It's, um, it's about saying goodbye to summer and saying hello to fall, right? So the goodbye to summer part is one. I showed you guys a binder a maker's binder that I got from Thread and Maple as part of my uh, birthday trip with my friends. And um, this is a different one than the one you saw because the one you saw was the jumbo size. So it was a lot floppier, like on the, the spine was a lot bigger and um, the binder itself was larger. This is much more compact. This is the regular binder size from Thread and Maple. You can see their logo. They were lovely, lovely to talk to. Um, Cause I didn't really like the big size. And I also, I really, really don't like dark, dark brown leather. It, the colorway is called chocolate on their website. I, I just don't like dark brown leather. It's a thing. It's either black or this color. This colorway is, or not colorway, color. <laughs> I make everything sound yarn related. Yeah, so this color is their whiskey whiskey leather and this is the one that I saw um it was was it Stitch Witch? I'll link her too because she's an amazing maker and I'm obsessed with her um but yeah I'll, I'll link her too anyway I saw her have it and then I talked about it with my friends and that's why my friend got it for me so um yes I'm obsessed with this and the size is perfect for me it's not too unwieldy and instead of getting the Lika set because Thread and Maple what they do is they get the dimensions for different interchangeable, interchangeable sets. So you can get an Addy interchangeable set, uh, Chowgu interchangeable set, or Lika, which is the one I had um, in the dark chocolate leather. I opted this time instead for three pages of thick circular pages. So I showed you this last time in the dark chocolate, but how this works is there's a little pocket and you get one, two, three sections each side. So six total per page. Um, and I chose to get three because I actually have a lot of thick circulars. Um, let me see if I can show So this is my current needle storage situation for my thick circulars. I chose not to get the Lika interchangeable folder, uh, folder page in this binder because I actually really like the Lika um, interchangeable set Driftwood. I love the case. I actually wish that a lot of other um, interchangeable set designers would take Lika's lead because they made it beautiful as well as functional. It's very aesthetic and um, I'm all about beauty and functionality. And most interchangeable sets that I've seen just aren't very pretty. Um, and this is my current needle situation. It's, it's a lot of fixed circulars. So this binder is gonna help me actually organize because what I do now is I reach into this bag and it's a cute bag, okay? And I reach into the bag and I pull out this bundle and I go through each needle to see if it's the size I need. Obviously I can visually tell if it's a US 9, like that's probably not the US 4 I'm looking for. You know, reasonably intelligent um, ascertaining of the size. However, when you have a, four, a US 4 and a US 5, very similar, very hard to see, especially because a lot of the needles that I have are Addy Fix Circulars. And the little writing on the cable, if you've never seen an Addy Circular, like it rubs off, okay? 
it's like this blue cable that's what Addies get come with and there's like this little teeny tiny writing this is pretty new not very used so you can still read it um but as the more you use it the more it disappears which um is not very functional i kind of wish addy would just engrave the side of the needle tip itself just like a lot of other makers do but you know whatever they're not hiring me they're not paying me so they can do what they like um but anyway yeah so i have a lot of addies and i will say after thinking about the whole needle situation everybody has asked me about needle preferences before you guys know that i use the lika interchangeables mostly however the past two three months i've pretty much only been using my i'm sorry i'm trying to avoid this one I've only been using my Addy Fix circulars um, that I have in my collection, and they are hands down my favorite needle to use. Uh, I like how smooth they are. You guys know I love a smooth touch. Um, but also, it's because it's so smooth, I feel like it helps me knit faster. Um, and as a person who already knits kind of pretty fast, the additional boost does help when you sign up for so many test knits like I do. So yeah, I prefer the Addy Fix circulars. I've thought about the Addy interchangeables. However, the issue with the connecting cable, I've talked about it in an earlier episode, that issue to my knowledge still hasn't been fixed. Um, and I don't know that I wanna invest that much money because Addy interchangeable sets are some of the most expensive in the market. So I'm not sure I wanna commit to that price point knowing it still has that issue. So I've been happy with my Addy fixed circulars. There are, there have been a lot of reported issues like with the, with the plastic cable separating from the tip. That's only happened to me one or twice, once or twice. Um, and I have a lot of Addy fixed circulars over the years. Um, like I said, it's only happened to me once or twice. So like statistically it's pretty low in my experience. Again, this is my experience. Um, and also those instances where that happened i kind of had it coming like i was holding it weird or like the project was ridiculously heavy and uh, it was really cold out so the plastic becomes more brittle you know all these other factors went into it so i could understand um how it happened and it wasn't necessarily just a manufacturer's issue it was yeah but i definitely didn't help you know that kind of thing so anyway that's all to say, I like my Addy Fix circulars and I think I'm just gonna keep using them instead of trying to invest in another interchangeable set because there hasn't been an interchangeable set that I know of um, that I've tried that I truly, truly like. I I talked about Lantern Moon last time. A lot of you guys told me that the, the smooth finish on that wood rubs off. So I don't wanna invest in that either because it's cheaper than Addy's, but it's still quite a bit of money just to have the rough wood touch of the Likas, which I'm not a huge fan of. So that's what's happening with the needles. That's what's happening with the binder, which fell, which is why I'm not showing it to you now. Um, okay, then the last part of the goodbye to summer is I, in the middle of summer, bought um, a pre-order from Terrapin Fibers. Let me show you some of her colorways. You guys might remember Terrapin Fibers because I used I used her yarn, Terrapin Fiber Works. I used her yarn in um, the Jesse May Outline Raglan Test Knit that I did. Um, it was a different colorway than this. Um, it was a nice, I should have brought it, I just realized. It was a beautiful pink peach color. You can look in the summer episodes. It's definitely there and it's lovely and the drape was just mwah. And that's, um, I got all of the same base from Terrapin Fiberworks. All of this is Severn DK. I would say instead of like a true DK, because of the way the fiber behaves, it's much more like a heavy sport. Um, and there is still a difference between a heavy DK and a heavy sport. This definitely, I think, is more on the sport side. So I do love it. I do love it. That's not to say I don't love it. Um, her Severn DK base, that's just what she calls it, is 100% pencil. Um, if you watched my summer episodes where I'm just, you know, rambling, I like always, uh, I had a couple corrections to myself because Tencel, when I was first introduced to Tencel, it was working retail. I used to work in anthropology when I was an undergraduate student. And um, in most retail settings, their Tencel is not uh, organically derived or not naturally derived. It's uh, created using synthetic methods. 
However, Terrapin Fiber Works, her big thing is um, using vegan yarn, plant-based yarn. Um, and there is tensile that is derived from plant fibers. She uses a plant fiber one. Um, tensile, if you guys don't remember from my summer episodes, it has the sheen, obviously, so shiny. Uh, it has the sheen of linen and the drape of linen. It drapes beautifully, oh, so good. Um, but it doesn't hurt the way linen does. Um, if you guys can't see, I started instinctively touching this because this is my lin linen callus. You see here, I have that callus. That's just from working with linen. When I lived in Austin, it's very hot in Austin, so I would pretty much work with linen most of the time if I could help it. And um, it rubbed me raw, raw. Like, didn't matter what brand it was. Some were worse than others, but even the good linen brands, like, ooh, it hurts. And that's just how the fiber behaves. It, linen is plant-based, so it doesn't have a lot of give. It's not fluffy and squishy. Um, it's pretty taut. And so when you use it very quickly, like I knit quickly, it, it develops into a callus. That's just what happened. Um, so it has the sheen and the drape of linen without the cost of the linen callus. So love that for me. And it is a summer fiber but it's not dry to the touch like cotton. That's the best way I can describe it. I hope that made sense to you guys when I said that the first time, dry to the touch. I don't know how else to describe it. I just, I don't like the feel of cotton, um, but the feel of linen to me is much more bearable than the feel of cotton, at least on my skin to work with. I think they would both be pretty difficult because linen doesn't have a lot of give, but Tencel, when I worked with it over the summer, I loved it. And that's why I wanted to get just the same base from her, um, this pre-order. The colorway that I'm holding in my hands right now is Onion. I don't know if you can see, let me. Uh, oh my God, I'm so afraid. Sorry. Okay, like shade. Onion. This is the colorway Onion. <laughs> Does that work? Oh God, I hope so. Um, it's really lovely. It's. Um, the colorway reminds me, it's red onions. Like you slice a red onion and that's what it looks like because the theme of this pre-order from Terrapin Fiber Works was um, farmer's market, summer's farmer's market, which is one of my favorite weekend activities during the summer. So go to the farmer's market before it gets hot and like pick out fresh produce and bread and honey. Love that. Um, yeah, so this is colorway onion. And then the colorway, like, I think this is, one of the best ways to show you how shiny it is. Like it is glowing on the screen, isn't it? This colorway is called White Current. And with the shade that I create, um, you can see it's actually this lovely soft peach pink. And it is so truly just gorgeous. So good. Let me hide my face so it focuses on the, the yarn. Um, yeah, it's so good, White Current. Um, Currents aren't as common in America as they are at what I had them in the UK. There are red currants. I think they're pink currants and then the purple uh, or they call them black currants, pardon me, and pink. <laughs> yeah, um, I love this colorway. Uh, I think it'll make the perfect summertime tea, but I probably won't knit it until next year because it's about to get very cold in Salt Lake. Well, not about to. By the time I get back, it'll be chilly. And this colorway is possibly my favorite ever. Like honestly, when I opened this box, first of all, I had forgotten about this pre-order because it's been a couple months, which is within the time frame that she said for the pre-order. Um, it's not that she was late. It's just that I forgot because I am dumb. Um, this colorway, oh God, is called garlic. And it's, garlic in the skin so you know garlic in the skin has those beautiful pink and purple undertones and overtones like that's what this is it's so beautiful i like i don't know what else to say about it other than i'm in love like uh one of my followers also got this and she was like no i straight up screamed when i got it and i was like yo me too same so it's a it's an effect that's known to be had um but yeah, Terrapin Fiberworks does an amazing job and I love that she's doing plant-based yarns 
Um, cause I like variety and I think it's very important for all dyers to feel like they have freedom to do something that not everybody's doing. Like I don't want someone if it's not aligned with their interests to just use the smooth plant or animal based yarns that I'm used to doing. Um, yeah, that's just, I hate when people tell us, tell other people like you shouldn't like that. You should only use this. Like just let people have a freedom of choice. I think that's really special and really important. And it, it becomes, that's how you personalize your making, right? Like we can talk about certain ethical issues that arise with consumption and creating. Sure, we can talk about that in any old time, but like to tell someone like you shouldn't like that. Like, I just think that no one should tell someone that. I know I use another should, but yeah, anyway. Okay, so now, before we get to the story, let me talk, let me show you the other whip that I've been working on. Um, this is, now I know it's called the Nostalgia Tea. Nostalgia. But uh, this is by Emma Creates, or uh, Bloom Create. My friend Emma. She's so lovely. I talked about her last time. Low-key obsessed with her. It's fine. And the Nostalgia Tea is so cute. Let me just pull it down a little bit so you can see the color work a little better. It's very simple but it has this kind of retro feel to it. And maybe the retro feel is helped by the colorways that I, the color scheme that I chose. It's very Emma. Um, she has this kind of like old soul vibe to her. Um, and I love that about her. She's just so sweet and endearing and genuine. Love that. Sorry, I'm just gushing about my friends. Um, I'm literally just about to separate for sleeves. I am on the row right before that, so. I did want to like delay this video until after I'd separated for sleeves, but I have a D stash scheduled later today and I haven't prepared at all for it. So that's what I'll be doing slap dash right then. Um, but yeah, so the nostalgia tea coming along beautifully. It's still in testing, so it's not available yet, but it will be soon. And I really do think you guys should get it. I think it is um, beginner accessible or in, inexperienced knitter accessible, uh, especially if you're new to color work because this uses two colors. It uses three colors total, but you're never using more than two at a time. Um, so it creates the look of being more complex than it actually is. I think it's a great introduction to two-stranded color work. Um, yeah, I love it personally. Yeah, there are a lot of really great uh, color work patterns that I've shown you guys. I've talked about it in so many episodes. If you're new to color work and you want to get started, um, the sweater patterns that I would suggest, well, designer, um, Jen, Jen Steingast, I've talked about her a lot. She was one of my very first color work projects and I love her work. Um, and Emma, this one, Nostalgia Tea, when it's out, I think would be great. There's also Butterfly Blooms. I've shown you guys that before by Tori Knits Things or Tori Knits NYC. Yeah, Tori Knits NYC, I'm pretty sure. Um, Anyway, butterfly blooms. Those are just great options right off the bat. And there's so many other amazing talented designers um, that write very clear patterns. Um, yeah, so check out my Ravelry project page for ideas if you want to get started. I really don't think that two-stranded color work is too difficult. And none of the designers that I've uh, tested it for um, have done a bad job explaining. And there are so many resources, free resources on like YouTube and just, you know, google.com that I really don't think there's anything stopping someone from trying it except being scared of it. Um, and if you get past the fear component, if you just try it, you might find that like, hey, you can actually do this. And that's a great feeling. Okay, now let me uh, talk about the fact why I'm in pain. So just for context, Five years ago, when I still lived in Austin, I used to, maybe less than five years ago, maybe like four years ago, and not important. I used to climb like religiously. I used to go every day before law school. Um, I loved it. I loved climbing. However, one day I tried to do something called a dyno or dynamo, dynamic move, where, um, so I only boulder. I don't do anything with the ropes. It, it freaks me out. Don't do anything with the ropes. Uh, bouldering you free climb it's not as high but you have no ropes obviously there's a padded ground it's very padded so injury is not very likely and that's good 
um, what a dynamo is or a dyno or dynamic zoom is usually you kind of have to end up swinging, letting go and grabbing onto another thing. And I miscalculated and I did not grab that other thing. I did steps one and two, which are swing and let go, did not do step three, which is a pretty essential step. So I ended up landing uh, in a way that you're not supposed to do. I landed on my ankle and um, it bent in a way it's not supposed to. And I heard the crunch. Um, so that's why when I say I'm getting back into climbing, I've started climbing again, that's what I mean. Like for years I stopped because the fear component of having a really, really bad uh, sprain that could have been a lot worse. Like it, my ankle still caused me pain. Like before it rains, I still get ankle pain. Um, and that's just for context. Because today what happened was I have now re-sprained that ankle. Um, how it happened was I went hiking and um, let me interrupt briefly to say, however you think the story is going to go, it's not how you think it's going to go. I'll tell you that. Okay. So I went hiking. For those of you who watch my Instagram stories, y'all know that I tend to knit while I hike because I don't need to look at my hands while I knit. I think I've demonstrated that to you guys amply in, in the past. Um, I have been knitting for, as of next month, 15 years. So I have been able to walk and knit at least for the past 11, because I remember walking around Paris um, and London when I lived over in Europe for a little bit. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy because I was just knit while I walk and it was fine. And I love doing it. Um, but anyway, all this to say, I'm very comfortable walking while I knit. I knit all the way up. I saw moose. Um, moose are terrifying. I spent time in Alaska, like a lot of time in Alaska. That's a long story. Um, had some bad moose experiences. They are terrifying. I don't trust anything that big. Um, it's just a bad idea. And it, too many close calls, too many close calls with the moose. I was already on edge. So then eventually I made my way down after I hit the peak of the trail, which was this beautiful lake. Oh, so stunning. Great, great time. So I'm headed down. Um, and early on in my trip down, uh, with the momentum, cause you know, we're up a mountain. So by the time I want to go back down, I'm like leaning backwards and kind of going a little quicker than I came up. Definitely, definitely more than I came up. Um, but then I start thinking, I was like, maybe I can run this because I've seen people run trails and I was like, that seems fun. Um, I never thought I would be able to, because I'm not much of a runner. Um, but I decided why not just try it. And uh, I was still knitting, I was still knitting and running down the trail and I found that I loved it. I loved feeling the wind on my face and in my hair. I loved uh, feeling like the rocks gave way under me and just like being able to bounce, you know, on the different sides of the trail. It was just lovely. I had an amazing time. I was flying down that mountain with my knitting. I was still knitting at a really good pace. So I was like, wow, yeah, this is amazing. Like productivity wise and getting cardio, like who, who could want more? And this story again is not gonna go the way you think because I reached a point where there were these like big old craggly rocks that I, have to, I would have to climb down. And yes, I could have tried to run down them, but my left leg tattoo that I showed you guys last time is still recovering and just two days ago, I got a tattoo on my right leg. So that's still very much recovering. And I was like, okay, if you fall and scrape your new tattoos, you are gonna be so upset. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna stop running and I'm gonna put my knitting away. So I put my knitting away in my little backpack on my back and stopped running and decided to carefully go down this craggly rock area and be a responsible adult. I took not three steps before my ankle. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it just gave up or if it had plotted secretly waiting all these years because because the, the spraining of the ankle when I was climbing, that was my fault. I did a dumb move that I miscalculated and landed on it. That was my bad and I admit that. But today, that was on my ankle. I didn't do anything wrong. 
I was going slow. I stopped running. I put away my knitting. Three steps in and ankle just going. <laughs> like I heard it. I felt it. It was in my soul. And like, I don't know if you, like not everybody watching this is in the medical field, but the human body, generally you don't want it to make a crunchy sound. Um, actually, I can't think of a single instance in which you want the human body to make a crunchy sound. Like, it's not good. It's not good. Um, so, yeah, so that happened to my ankle, and uh, I was on the ground, and I was like, well, I'm glad I put my knitting away, because imagine how much worse it would have been if not. For one, I would have gotten dirt on my knitting, and that would have really upset me, especially on this beautiful pastel color I'm working with. Um, so I got up and tested if I could bear weight on my ankle. And I could, I was like, well, this is a pretty well-frequented trail. So I'm not worried about like people never finding me or anything like that. Even though there was no phone signal, I was like, I, I can get help if I need to. So I'm not worried. Um, but I didn't have to do that. Thank goodness I could bear weight. So I was like, okay, I will just carefully climb down this mountain, still not taking out my knitting because obviously with my ankle so hurt, I was just, I wanted to focus on being careful, right? So I'm walking gingerly down, not super limping, but definitely in pain. And um, I reach this point where I, I think to myself, oh, well now my ankle doesn't hurt that bad anymore. So maybe it'll be okay. And it was not three steps after I had that thought that my ankle did it again. It's out to kill me. Um, because it did it again on a craggly rock thing and I crumpled and I felt that like throughout my body like emanating from my ankle up my body and uh I knew then I was like oh this is like bad bad so I got up again to see if I could bear weight on it barely I could barely bear weight on it and I looked at my map and I didn't have phone signal, but it was guesstimating that I still probably had a mile and a half left to go down to the trail and in my car. So I, for the last mile and a half, I moved at a glacial pace. And because I was already moving so slow and there was no way my ankle could get worse, I then took out my knitting and started knitting. And you know what? After I started knitting, didn't have a single slip, not even a hint of a fall, nothing. Sure-footed, I mean, limping, but sure-footed on that gravelly bit too. So I think the moral of this long-winded rambly story is that much like a shark that stops swimming, if I stop knitting, I will die. <laughs> um, because I did everything I was quote unquote supposed to. I paid attention to the trail. I wasn't distracted. I wasn't multitasking, whatever, whatever. And um, my ankle just stopped working. And then I started knitting and everything was fine. So that's the, that's the moral I'm taking away from this. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for listening. I'm sure it was very important to you too. Um, my goodness. Oh, and you know what I just realized? Sorry, I've been so distracted from the pain. I don't think I said what this is that I'm wearing. And I normally do that first. Okay, let me... S oh, no, I, I haven't even talked about... Okay, so this is the thing I was knitting while I was, you know, slip and sliding, breaking my ankle, whatever. Um, this, I showed you guys this last time. And if I have already said this, ignore me, I guess. Um, this is the Dad Sweater by Emily Curtis or M. We Kurt, and I told you guys last time I'm renaming it for, for just my project, um, and that's going to be the mom sweater. And the colorway is from Hawaii Bazaar Co., and the colorway is Moonlight Densetsu. It's this beautiful pastel color. If you want to see more of it not washed out in the sun, sorry, these curtains are good for nothing. Uh, if you want to see it not washed out in the sun, watch last week's episode, because um, that one you can get a better view of it. It's just so beautiful it's soft it's feminine it's everything I wanted um for a sweater that makes me think about my mom hence the mom sweater and uh, it's perfect and um if I had been knitting the entire time maybe I wouldn't have so much pain in my ankle right now but you know who's to say so yeah that's what I was working on when I suffered all this all this nonsense uh but don't worry you guys I talked to Andrea the knitting PT 
Um, she's probably one of my bestest friends and she happens to be a licensed physical therapist. So I was like, hey buddy, um, if I twisted my ankle twice today on an ankle that was already previously severely sprained, what should I do? And I'm glad I asked because when I was studying to be an EMT, they told us uh, elevate the leg and uh, use a ice cold press compress, you know, like always, that was just the procedure. Um, but she was telling me that now recommendations are at, that you elevate, but you do not use ice unless there's severe swelling. It did so happen that there is severe swelling, but it was really good to know that like once the swelling goes down, I really shouldn't ice. Um, the focus instead is on um, bringing back the circulation. So it's very good to know. So thank you, Andrea. And I didn't tell her the story of what happened. I was like, it's so much to explain. Please just watch the video. And she was like, okay, I hate you for making me wait, but okay. So I'm sorry you waited. Thank you for your help. It was very educational. Um, yeah. Okay. And now I can circle back to what I'm wearing because I just realized I forgot. I think I forgot. <laughs> sorry. I, I did take pain medication. I had some leftover from my tooth problem. Um, not problem, procedure. Yeah, anyway. What I'm wearing, I showed you guys last time, it is the, sorry, it is the Knit Me If You Can sweater by Colibri, but I did do what I said and I removed the daisies that were on the front. Um, I know everybody suggested like, what if you double stitch? What if you crochet embroider like a chain daisy instead? I definitely have thought about the chain embroidery thing, but right now I don't have the bandwidth for it. I'm just going to let it be a plain sweater for a little bit. Um, but I do want to wear it to show you guys just how cute the fit is. Like it really is a, a very vintage -y sweater to me. Like the neckline, it has a refined touch and like I chose to do the poofy sleeves. Um, there are uh, instructions on my RAV about how I did the so dramatically poofy sleeves. But this like deep raglan and oversized bust, but like it, it like hangs really nicely. It cinches in. So it, it just has this very vintage style to me. And I wanted to show you guys. Um, I don't have a finished object photo with it yet. Uh, I don't have enough time, I don't think, before I leave for Korea to get one. Um, just I'm trying to pack for three weeks and I, I don't know how to do that and also get finished object photos. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys how it hangs because I think it's it's stunning. And I do want to make more, I told you guys. Um, I think I will crochet an embroidery thing for the next one, but this one, I don't know. I think for the office, I think it looks really good play. But that's just my opinion. Um, okay, I think that's everything I had to say. I'm sorry this was so haphazard. Like I said, I'm in a lot of pain. The pain medication hasn't fully kicked in yet, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but I just wanted to talk to you guys before I leave for three weeks. Like I said, I'm not recording a video um, while I'm gone because I'm worried about the region specificity, like how that's going to work with YouTube. So I will just see you guys when I get back. And as always, thank you so much for sticking with me and supporting me and being wonderful human beings. I really do appreciate it. And um, I will be hopefully finding lots of things to share with you guys while I'm gone. So I will see you when I get back. All my love. Bye.